All right. Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome to Season 2, Episode 6 of Star Trek October. If you're just joining us, uh, we're a Star Trek Adventures actual play using the rule set by Modifius Entertainment. We are set in the year 2414 aboard a starbase in the far reaches of the Sabine Expanse. And uh, if this is your first time tuning in, what I would say is that you don't really need to have watched previous episodes to enjoy this one. But I would say we are kind of on a three-parter right now, so you might catch up at some point, but I'm going to do my best to make it entertaining all the same. Uh, if you are interested in playing catch-up, you can find the VODs on YouTube and most of the popular podcast solutions. Uh, announcements. The only one I have is that um, starting this coming Sunday, um, I'm going to be launching two new games. Uh, one is going to be a Black Crusade game, so Warhammer 40k. Should be a lot of fun there. Uh, that's going to be at 2 p.m. On, on Sunday. And then there's uh, also a, a Romulan game that's going to start up at 9 p.m. in the old Groundskeeper's time slot. Should, uh, should also be fun. But yeah, with uh, that said, uh, let's just go around and have everyone introduce themselves, starting with Mr. Dag. Hey, everybody. I'm Dag. I am the captain of Deep Space October and the USS Umbriel. Captain Ibsen Kijwick, the Zaldan. And I have no idea what's going to happen today, but uh, I feel like I can get through it with these guys. If you want to talk about it, hit me up on Twitter at Trek Nexus. Uh, John, the human pilot. Um, uh, yeah. Terrell is the human pilot played by John. Uh, yeah, so I've already messed that up. So yeah, move on. Nice. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Matthew. I play uh, Lieutenant Jana, the Cation Chief Engineer of Deep Space October. And hi, I'm John. Dang it. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm Aaron. I play Dr. Dottig, the Talarite Chief Medical Officer. Uh, and hi, I'm Watney. I play Lieutenant Commander Stecco, Chief of Security, and you can find me at Twitch at Doc Watney. And if you don't know me by now, I'm ELH, and I'm your Game Master for the evening. Let's go ahead and run our little introductory. Welcome back, everybody. So something I like doing for all my Star Trek games is having the players do an opening log, and I believe Stetco has it today, however brief it may be. Aye, is aye. Red Alert supposed to be on? Um, Not it quite isn't. yet. Not quite yet. Not yet. <laughs> Soon, uh, but not yet. <clears throat> Chief Security Officer's Log Supplemental. The events since stumbling upon this changeling have been mysterious at best and dangerous at worst. I thought I'd had the situation under control in sickbay until the changeling somehow escaped its capsule and began interacting with Dater Dateg. If our goal is to preserve the timeline, any interaction with this life form could put that at risk. I immediately called the captain of sickbay and recommended we leave the area around Breen space as soon as possible, but to no effect. He was set on maintaining our position to give Lieutenant Terrell, Dr. Dateg, and Lieutenant Commander Jana some time to investigate the rogue planet nearby. This M-class planet is apparently falling into one of two nearby black holes. The hope is that the Takan technology we sense there is capable of sending the temporal interloper back where they came from. For now, the Umbriel remains just outside of Breen territory, with eight Breen ships pulling up to our doorstep. 
I called for a quarantine beacon broadcasted on all frequencies to hopefully delay them and give our away team some more time. But the situation will surely come to a head at some point. It is the brain after all. Hopefully we'll be ready. End log. All right. And we're going to start today's session actually in a formless white void. Uh, now to talk about a little bit how you got to this point in the beginning, uh, specifically Jana, Terrell, and Datig. So Terrell, Datig, Jana, uh, you all had more or less uh, flown the Banshee, Terrell's fancy new f fighter craft, uh, to this rogue planet to find that the rogue planet was almost, uh, to borrow an Avatar reference, almost like a Pandora world where everything from the trees to the ivy to the water, everything was sort of this bioluminescent, almost serene sort of landscape that uh, would make for a really good hollow novel or hollow retreat if you had brought such equipment along. But uh, in sort of exploring this world, uh, Terrell took the Banshee down into the water and found a pipe that supposedly led to the control room uh, of this entire planet. And when you stepped into said control room, you basically entered into a white void, not unlike the prophets do, or not unlike a certain Q does to Picard every now and again. And where we last left off, or where we stopped because of tech issues, um, it is one of those things where you sort of look around, all three of you, and Terrell, you start to think of, all right, I, I need a path, I need a path. And... A path doesn't appear, but what does appear is a glowing ball of light uh, from behind you. Uh, now this ball of light is actually a darker blue. Um, it has a trail of uh, fluorescent purple uh, sparkles that as it moves a little bit this way and that uh, sort of trails it in the air. But uh, the orb or the light, whatever the hell it is, it just sort of sits there floating. Uh, can't really, I was going to say, none of you are Betazoids or Empaths, so can't give you that information. But yeah, you're now looking at a, um, an orb of light. What are you going to do about it? Scan it? Earl holds up his hand. Hello? And the ball of light, I think, is going to start approaching Terrell, uh, specifically your outstretched hand. Can you take us to operations and it gets closer and closer and closer if any of you wish to intervene this is your chance to do so if I blow up uh, just treat the banshee well what are you saying man I mean we need you to fly us out of here neither of us can actually fly that thing yeah, I mean, oh, how hard it's gonna be he did it hey <laughs> and with that uh, Terrell will reach forward and try to touch the uh, thing. All right. So as this will-o'-wisp, uh, or yeah, there, there we go, we'll just call it a will-o'-wisp. As this will-o'-wisp touches uh, the fingertips that you present to it, it actually rockets into your skin and flies up your arm and across your chest out to the other arm uh, and flies out of that side and in the process passes completely through you. Now, what it feels like is almost like, um, I mean, I don't know if you've ever accidentally electrocuted yourself, but you know that sort of buzzing or that bit of numbing sensation that comes afterwards? Uh, um, yeah. Yeah, you're, that entire feeling is up your arms, a little bit in your chest. It does feel like you probably just took, took uh, 220. And if you've never taken 220, don't. It really hurts. To, to uh, quote Bill Murray... Uh, Jaro looks at the others and says, I feel funky. Well, that's that's my cue. I'm going to take my, my medical tricorder and scan him to make sure neurologically that he's fit. All right. Roll me a uh, reason medicine difficulty of uh, zero. Also, quick check while you're rolling that. Is everybody uh, hearing the engine hum at least? Because I turned that on. Mm -hmm. Cool. Oh, yes. All right, hey, you get one success. Um, good news, bad news. Good news is that Terrell is perfectly fine after a little mm -hmm. bit of rest. Bad news, I mean, you're Dottig, you come up with bad news. Hmm. Your uh, 
left index finger is now uh, 0.05 microns shorter. I don't recommend you do that too many more times. You, you just let, let let's follow the orb. Yeah, that's what we should do. As he is conducting that scan, I'd like to actually scan the Will of the Wisp itself. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to pay particular attention to the hue of the trail that it's leaving. Is there some kind of comprehensible pattern to those emanations or something mm -hmm. I can glean from those? How's your science score? It's reasonable. It's a three. Okay. I'd like you to roll me an insight and a science score difficulty of two. And remember, you do have one momentum at the current moment. Um, would you I, oh sorry go ahead go ahead i was gonna say could could one of us potentially aid him i know he's saying he wants to do that while i'm scanning him so i don't know if that's feasible yeah, i'm gonna say this is probably as you're scanning terrell and having that little conversation this is john off to the side right. then uh, i would use this the one momentum we have if that's all right with you guys oh mm -hmm. of course and well. no applicable focus all right yeah so i'm gonna say unfortunately with only one success Jana, you sort of scan the orb, and all you really get back is a bunch of data that confirms that, yeah, it's some sort of particle emanation, and that there does seem to be maybe the hints of a pattern, but it's nothing concrete. Uh, Doc, I, I can't get anything out of this. I, it seems like it's beyond my understanding of the electromagnetic spectrum. I just, I, I shouldn't have gotten that C double plus B double minus. Well, I mean, I didn't, I don't think I taught you molecular biology, so that one's not, I mean, none of them are on me anyway. It was your fault you got the grades you did, but. No, no, that's what I'm saying. I should have invested myself a little bit more, mm. you know, stridently in that particle physics course. Yes, I agree. Uh, question though, GM, is there like a visible difference in hue and coloration to the orb as it, as it moves? Um, I would say that for the large part, it's still just a big old ball of blue lightning. And the trail is mostly purple, but if you look really, really carefully, like super fall in, maybe even squint your eyes, you can see that the very tips of the particle trail are prismatic. They are almost shifting through rainbow-like hues. You may be onto something, Lieutenant. Uh... Have you tried patching your tricorder in through your universal translator to see if maybe this is some form of visual communication? Yes, and I would like to do that immediately. <laughs> Very nice. I'd like you to roll me a daring engineering difficulty of three. Okay. Um, because I have just made a fool out of myself and I am feeling embarrassed at this juncture, I would like to try to tap my value. How else can I maintain my reputation as a miracle worker in order to try to preserve it, uh, or at least preserve my appearance of competence? Okay, I'll allow it. And that was daring engineering? Daring engineering, difficulty of three. Survey says. Hey, two successes. So that gets you four moment, or that's four successes, which you get one momentum. And yeah, uh, Jana, when you basically patch your tricorder into your universal translator, um, I don't know if you particularly have played Mass Effect, but for those who have played Mass Effect, you guys know the Hanar, the ones mm -hmm. that are always sort of like this one thinks this, etc., etc., etc. Same kind of impassive, emotionless voice uh, comes over your tricorder. And it simply says, this one can guide you to the control room. This one can guide you to the control room. And it just repeats over and over and over. I think this one can guide us to the control room. <laughs> Terrell is following it. Hmm. A reasonable assumption. Mm -hmm. I, I thought so, yes. So you all... And, and, and as he's walking, uh, Jaro's like putting the ar uh, hair on his arms down. He's like... Man, this would have been murder if it would have went through either one of you two. Why is that? My hairs are still standing up. It does look like you're rather angry or you mm. know, posturing aggressively. So I, I, it's a little bit off-putting for me personally. But I mean, where I'm, where I come from, that doesn't mean that. Oh. What? I, I don't want to know. 
Just let's, well, I'd, let's just suffice it to say, under different circumstances, I may be very flattered. And on that note, we're going to come back to <laughs> Captain Kiswick and Stetko on the bridge of the Umbriel. And as the green outside get closer and closer and closer, uh, Stetko, uh, you, you're sort of seeing signs that they're keeping their weapon charged. They are assuming not a full attack pattern, but they are getting into good positions to shoot at you. Uh, she'll defer to Kiswick now that he's cognizant on what he wants to do. Add us to their weapons, Commander. Weapons are hot, sir. They're approaching. Hail them. Right. And because I think you guys could use some momentum, we're actually going to make a task of this. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> uh, let's see. Stetco, I need you to roll me a control and engineering. And if somebody can get the Umbriel's communications what? and engineering. I have good. a one. Well, that's okay. The difficulty is only zero. So if you Do roll it. any successes, it's momentum. Do it. <sighs> All right. Double Umbriel communication. Umbriel got an assist. Very nice. Starship security systems? No, not security systems, unfortunately. And even if you did have a focus, as you said, you only have an engineering of one, so focus wouldn't help you at all. Fine. Yipes. All right. Hey, look at that. That's three okay. successes. That's three <laughs> momentum. Yay. And yeah, all you literally do, Stetco, is you push the button that Worf does, and there's that chime over the bridge that signifies the channel is open. Do -do. Kishwick will stand and tug on his uniform as is tradition. Mm -hmm. This is Captain Kishwick of the Federation Starship Umbriel. We are uh, currently experiencing some technical, di technical difficulties and apologize for any intrusions into your space. How can I help you? And there's an uneasy silence. And eventually Ensign Johnson at the con sort of turns around and says, Sir, uh, they heard us. They're not responding, though. They're still advancing. Understood. Stedco, keep a hot finger on shields, just in case. Athena, <laughs> try to make sure the ship doesn't actually experience any technical difficulties. Yeah, about that. Um, is this a bad time to tell you that... Um... You know, I think it can wait. You know, not a big deal. Not, no, not no. You, you started it. Go. Well, um... You, you know that science lab that Terrell and Jana were working in? Yeah. Well, it's currently on fire. Anti-fire mechanism? That's kind of the issue I was going to bring up, that uh, fire suppression isn't working. Kiswick to engineering. Send a fire suppression team to science station four. And uh, replying is not an engineer, but someone we haven't heard from in a while. It's a certain Ensign Jenkins. And Ensign Jenkins reports, Da, I am already here. I am suffering third degree burns, but I am putting fire out. It is totally okay. You're supposed to use the fire extinguishers, not your hands. Listen, this is very volatile situation. I did not have time for fire extinguisher. Kishwick is like staring at the Breen fleet. Yeah, I get what you mean by volatile. It's okay. This gives something dot uh, dotting something to complain about. He loves complaining. I I just I so enjoy how you take care of my doctor's need to complain about everything. Ah, good because at this point I'm thinking I'm going to need a regenerated flesh on my entire arm. If the brain let us do that, I'm be more than happy to apply it myself. And you just hear a laugh, and the calm cuts out, and Johnson sort of looks back at you, Captain, and goes, "He's insane." He's certifiably insane. Yeah, but he graduated top of his class. Does that, that doesn't excuse insanity. And, uh, Starfleet has new policies regarding uh, people who don't feel pain. Hmm. And again, the Marine outside on the view screen get closer and closer and closer. And I think what happens at this point is I'm going to do a very important role on the side here. Uh, I don't know if the stream's going to see it, but if it does stream, you'll just have to not spoil it for the players. Okay. So, yeah, it does look like the stream can hear it. 
But basically, the uh, the Breen have managed to, let's just say, get the stones to channel or challenge your bluff. So right as you would normally put up shields, uh, Stetco, uh, what happens is you are detecting an incoming transport. Boarding. They're they're. Because our shields are down, At not the up. <laughs> right. You gotta use the use the use. Even use though the, she the, probably would have done that. <laughs> use the emergency riot control holograms. <laughs> <clears throat> Sir, I'm detecting detecting an incoming <laughs> transport. Ray shields, red alert. All right. Mm -hmm. Now we go to red alert on the overlay. I saw what you meant earlier, Dag. That apparently the the red alert sound was sounding for no reason. But yeah, should be fixed now. Anyway, as you go to red alert, uh, Athena reports, um, I don't think we have to worry about the boarding parties, Captain. Why? Because Jenkins there. Get a security team down there. I don't uh, need to lose Jenkins. to. Stecco will go herself. Very nice. All right. And we're going to cut back to the away team at this point uh, because you guys have been walking for what feels like 10, 20 minutes at this point. And it's just more white void, nothing to be found whatsoever. And maybe right about the time you're about ready to start complaining or, you know, basically yelling at the wisps for being useless, all of you start to notice that the whiteness around you, the, the white void, starts to dim and begins to fade to black. Well, this, this doesn't look good. It's a change. It's got to be better than what was going on. I don't know. White is uplifting. Black just means we're going to die. Isn't that what that means to your culture? No, no. It's quite the opposite, actually. It's, you know, don't go into the light. But, I mean, plants die without light. How does that make any sense? It, it, that's not important right now. Okay. No, it, 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 I believe the actual poem is do not go gently into that good night and this is dark like night could very well be that good night that maybe we should not go gently into. I got to see double minus D double plus in uh, interpretive poetry. Yo, that tracks. That, I'm sure that was a very valuable contribution to your Starfleet career. Was this the first time you've been able to draw upon that information? <laughs> oh... May the fates help me if those are my last words. Well, actually, well, would be, that would be your last yeah. word. Mm -hmm. Which is actually kind of worse. And it I just want my, you know, my, first, my first word was, quote, I want my last word to be, unquote. Nice. So at this point, it's gotten so dark that the only re reason you're able to see each other is the light coming off of the Will-O-Wisp. But the ball stops, or at least it comes to what seems to be a stop. And it flies up into the air, maybe about two meters, uh, at which point it explodes, not violently, but like an explosion of light. And all around you, I don't really have a, a good token art for this, but if you can imagine, uh, basically holographic readouts ranging from temperature of various bodies of water, of certain plants and animals, uh, you're also seeing... Uh, what seems to be some sort of energy reserves, not unlike uh, an engineering readout. Uh, you're seeing some sort of uh, Takan language that would suggest uh, perhaps something on the lines of a con, like a, like a station, like a, a piloting station. And you're also seeing that there is a holographic display of the two black holes uh, that are outside of this planet. And as this all activates and swirls around you in a green and blue light, um, you hear a voice, all of you hear a voice in regular Earth common that says, Station 27, online. All right. Uh, not to be bossy, but I think, Jonna, you need to check that out over there. I'm going over here. Uh yeah, I'll, I'll see what I can do about the power systems. Doctor, maybe you can investigate the black hole sy system or whatever it is with that. That seems more like up your alley. I'll try to manage power systems. Yeah. I mean, and you're in command, so I should... I'm going to see if 
I'm going to see if I can fly, fly a planet. This would be a first. I'm sure it must have been done by somebody in the past. All right, for me, it would be a first. It, fair enough. Mm. All right. So, uh, actually, I think there there might be a... Uh, I'll figure out a way to get a view for this. But basically, uh, as you go to each other's sections, uh, I would like Jana. I need an insight engineering. Terrell, I need an insight con. Dottig, I need an insight science. The difficulty on all of these is a one. All right. I would say we should probably all take a momentum for that. Yeah. All right. And would experimental technology apply? Uh, I would say it would in this instance, yes. Um, would. Holy um, cow! <laughs> Nice, would, that um, is five successes, so that's already four momentum back. Nice. Um, Jim, would uh, xenobiology, anthropology, or linguistics um, help me interpret the controls that I'm seeing? I, it would, yeah. I have uh, Starship Pilot, Starship Construction, and Shuttlecraft Operations. Uh, I'll give you the pilot for this instance. Okay. Awesome. All right, so yeah, that's three successes for Dantig. All right, yeah, you guys are capped on momentum. Like, I I think you have one or two floating, but you guys are capped on momentum. So what you see is the following. Uh, Terrell, you see that the planet is doing its damnedest not to fall into the black hole, but uh, within about an hour's time, if nothing is done, it will fall into the black hole permanently, a a.k.a. it will pass the event horizon. Jana, you're seeing that the strain of keeping the planet from falling into the black hole is draining power reserves rapidly. You're looking at uh, loss of power in about 30 minutes. Dottig, in almost a stark contrast, when you look at the readouts, what you see is that there does appear to be some form of a particle or some form of a exchange between the planet itself and the two black holes. Uh, it almost forms like a triangle loop of particles streaming from one place to another. Um, vague. Is it in any way like circuit-like? Yes, actually it is. It is traveling to the black holes and then back to the planet. So, sorry to interrupt there, Aaron, but do you mean that something mm -hmm. is actually exiting the black hole? It's a, a particle stream from what the uh, from the way I interpret it. That's That would be correct, yes. Mm -hmm. Hmm. And so if we have if we have a floating momentum, can I spend that to answer a question? Sure. Um, are the rates of exchange to and from the black holes in the planet uniform? No. And that is uh, reflected as sort of a reminder. Um, one of the black holes is spewing out X-rays at an accelerated rate. Um, the smaller of the black holes. That is what's unstable about the system. Like, the more you look at this, you realize it's supposed to be a stable system where the black holes and the planets sort of re remain stationary to one another, but something's thrown off the balance. So, Terrell is picturing this planet and the black holes, um, so bear with me here, as like a giant pod racer. Honestly, yeah, that that's a good descriptor. <laughs> and the uh, black holes are pulling it through space. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so we've got to figure out a way to normalize the stream and turn this sucker around. <clears throat> this will be the first time anybody's ever flown a black hole. More be using the black hole to fly us, but we have to find and determine the nature of the disruption, the source of the disruption, before we can actually correct the issue. So, uh, by my count, we still have two floating momentum. Mm -hmm. um, do we have a sense of the location of the disruption? Is it in space? Is it on the planet? Like something has disrupted the uh, power generation system uh, in some way? Or is it interference from outside of the planet itself? Since you spend a momentum, I will answer truthfully. The source of the disturbance is not on the planet. It is out in space uh, between the planet and the second black hole. You're looking at the, the readouts, and this is just a hunch on your part. That looks like a Prometheus class. Why is a Prometheus class here? You don't know, but 
yeah, you, you'd recognize a Prometheus glass anywhere. Hey, Jero, you see this over-designed hunk of junk that's sitting out in the middle of space? What, why is there a Prometheus class out there? God, I hate those. Um, yeah, I know. Great oh, question. Really? I thought they looked pretty slick, except when they split apart. That never worked right. That sucked. Yeah, the splitting It was like apart. some five-year-old designed that thing. <laughs> I do like the arrowhead-shaped primary hull. Well, we can admire it later. Uh, we need to find a way to clear the fuel injector, so to speak. Wait, you mean it's it's interrupting the matter stream? Mm-hmm. Uh, can we identify the ship? If we can identify the ship, maybe, um, Lieutenant Gianna, you could use the prefix codes to take remote control and pilot it out. Or uh, probably better if Terrell piloted it, but the point stands, I think. Well, I think we're going to have to count on Jonna to pilot that because if we can get this thing moving, I'm going to be pretty damn busy moving the planet. Uh, do you remember what happened to us when I nearly caused us to collide with an asteroid on our way here? I mean, I appreciate the you, faith you, you can have. Do it. You can do it. I, no. I have nothing but faith. I mean, you are a miracle worker, aren't you? We all have our areas of specialization, but... Regardless, question for you, GM. Do we think we could actually get a signal, whether that's a transmission of the prefix codes to take control of the ship remotely or just a signal to contact them through any interference? What I'm going to say is that if you attempt to contact them in any way, the Breen are going to know. Is there a way that we can use... <clears throat> so it's in the matter stream. Is there any way that we can alter the matter stream to carry a sonic signal so that it like reverberates off the hull of the ship. Hmm. I would say that it would be difficult, but it would be possible. Yes. So, I'm just trying to think what a task would be in that case. Uh, so let me think about it for a little bit. Let's go back to the other group and I'll think about it. That, that'll give me some time to consider where to go from there. But yeah, as we return to the bridge of the Umbriel, uh, I am actually at this point going to be rolling an attack from the Breen just because they are going to, at least one of them is going to open fire. So immediately, uh, the Umbriel is going to suffer. Wow. That's a lot. 9, 10, 11, 12. Umbriel is scale five. Yes. I think it yeah. is. And then, do you guys have a blade of armor or not? I don't think you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you're going to suffer seven damage to your shields, uh, which is a breach. So let me roll the breach. Freaking great. Which, of course, it's a structure. So I have to now roll this. It's All right, no bridge. one is injured. So what happens is the entire Umbreo rocks as a violent blow slams into the shields. And... What happens is, as is Star Trek tradition, uh, some of the consoles on the bridge blow out in a shower of sparks, and some regulation rocks in the bulkhead fall down onto what are, hopefully, empty seats, no ensigns in them. But uh, there's even a conduit that's now spewing some form of a, uh, a, uh, a fog or a mist all over the bridge. Johnson, get us out of here. And Kiswick, while he says that, will be leaping over the horseshoe to take the position of tactical that Stecto Stetco vacated to go engage our borders. Yeah, All man. right. Daryl derelicted her duty. Woo woo. <laughs> <Let's> do it. <laughs> YOLO. <laughs> oh, dear. So, yeah. Uh, we're going to actually now go to Watney and Stetco. So, Stetko, uh, you're going to arrive in the lab, and okay. as you approach it, um, you're already smelling the acrid uh, smell of burnt plastic, mm -hmm. of just a lot of fumes that you probably shouldn't be breathing. Uh, but as you arrive, uh, you do see uh, that the door to the lab is open, and you hear the sounds of what could be a scuffle inside. Okay, so she's going to have grabbed a Type 2. Is that the rifle? I'm the sure Type 3 would be the officer. rifle. And yeah, okay, in, order with the rifle. To, in order to get the rifle, you would have to give me at least one momentum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do it. Okay. I want it. 
she would have felt she would have felt the need to prepare now because she accidentally let them in mm -hmm. so uh she would have you can have that and um uh she's gonna peek is the door like half open it is, is it yeah it, it's okay. it's half open like one side is open but the other one is kind of just going wiggling back and forth on its hinges okay um so she'll peek in and see what the situation is if, if she can tell yeah yeah so jenkins is badly burned like significantly burned across <laughs> his body but what you see is jenkins is and i'm trying to find, figure out what i did with the breen tokens but uh jenkins is quite literally going mano a mano with two breen officers and it's one of those things where you see that both Jenkins' uh, phaser and the Breen's pistols uh, have all been sort of skewed off to the side uh, behind the circular table uh, in the far corner of the room. And they're literally just punching each other. They are literally just slugging it out. Okay. Um, she will step in around the door with the weapon drawn and be like freeze <laughs> okay i need you to roll me a present security difficulty okay. of four got it <laughs> freeze um i don't think i have a i don't think i have a a focus, a focus? yeah i'm looking at your focuses and i'm not really seeing one that could apply here nope that's okay Forensic um, science. I mean, come no, on. Not I'm not trying science. it anymore. I'm <laughs> not trying to make the GM mad at me. <laughs> Power system. No. Get the fire suppression back online. <laughs> Forensics, so, obviously, drill. Question. I, I would say that you have five momentum if you want to roll more dice. Too late. <laughs> okay. In that case, what's, with only... What's, um, what's the, what was the DC? A four. Oh, yeah, never mind. Oh, well, yeah. So it is one of those things where you come in, you step in and you go freeze and Jenkins and the Breen like look at you for a moment and then Jenkins throws a left hook without even looking and then they just go back to beating the crap out of so each other. So it would have been really funny if the Breen had been like, oh, OK, like I, I get it. <laughs> um, So she's going to fire at one of the Breen. OK, and this is going to be the last action before uh, we go into actual initiative order. But uh, I do need okay. you to roll me a control security difficulty of two at this point. And I have uh, energy based small arms technology. Most definitely would apply. And she's just going to try and well, like, how does it work with brain suits? Can you stun them? Um, yeah, I mean, you can stun them just through their suits, but it's not going to be one of those things where um, they're like they do have resistance is what I would say. Like, so it, it is harder to get through their suit, but it is possible. So if she were to try to fire lethally. You'd have to give me a threat, but you would potentially avoid that resistance. Yes. What I'm trying to do is knock them out, but there's like, it seems to be like a fine line. Right. And that is sort of the line you toe. And I guess sort of reveal the mechanic here. Um, the Breen have resistance against um, non-lethal damage, meaning that if gotcha. you do lethal damage, they don't have the resistance. But a lethal damage, if you roll a high enough on damage, you will literally vaporize them. Mm. Okay, she's just going to try and non-lethally take them out for now. Okay. So, um, yeah. What am I rolling again? You're rolling control and a security. Control... Security, and I'm going to use a momentum and roll three. Okay. Uh, and I do have the focus. Bam. Hey, four successes. That means you get uh, two momentum right back. Uh, what that means is as you fire out, you are able to hit both the Breen involved. Uh, I now need you to roll me a, let's see, you're using a type three. I believe it is 10 challenge dice for you, if I remember my chart correctly. Okay. Yikes. And yeah, with nine, that is more than sufficient that even with their suit's resistance, uh, the Breen go down hard. They basically are stunned and fall unconscious to the floor next to Jenkins. And Jenkins turns and says, oh, thank you for assist that go, though I think I could have handled it. 
Uh, you look severely injured. Do you need to get to sick bay? Oh, no, I'm fine. I get burns like this uh, every Tuesday. Okay, I'm still going to order you to go to sick bay. <laughs> are are gonna, you sure? I'm going to make you do that. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. And he maybe like starts to sulk away and he gives like one of the brain a but, kick. Well, we'll uh, tell... I don't know what's a good I mean, name for... A, tell another officer to get in here to restrain these brain before they wake up again. Uh, we'll, we'll do, ma'am. And uh, Jenkins steps out. At this point, uh, we're now going to return to the white void, or I guess the black void at this point. And to answer your question about how we're going to handle you guys sending a message via the particle stream. Um, hey, here's what I want to try okay. real quick. Um, it costs two momentum to create an advantage. It does. So tell me whether or not we can do this. Mm -hmm. I'd like to spend it so that we find the exact uh, sonic resonance mm -hmm. so that we can kind of create um, cans on a string. Oh, yeah, I can see that. Okay. So because, okay. I mean, they're nothing but a big can in space. And, you know, we're in a place where we could potentially have the same thing. And granted, the communication won't be crystal clear, mm -hmm. but it's going to be something people can't interrupt. Yeah. All right. Uh, in that case, what I'm going to say is that's going to definitely lower the difficulty of this task. Um, this is going to be a daring and an engineering. It will be at a difficulty of four, and you can have up to one assist on this. Jana. Oh, yes. Also, because I have threat, I'm going to spend some threat to create the complication that in doing this tin can maneuver... If you roll any complications whatsoever, the planet is going to use all of its power to do this, and your only recourse will be to immediately escape to the Banshee. I mean, unless you want to be in a black hole, which if you do, all the more power to you, I guess. Uh, do you want to take the lead? I think from uh, ELH's sort of Me new too. process, he'd prefer you to take the lead. Yeah, okay. I, think, I think Terrell, this is Terrell's idea. You All right. Do it. So Terrell, you know, he's he's here. He's trying to do this. He's trying to do this with the help of his great friend. Mm -hmm. um, he kind of feels that, you know, he, he has something to prove mm -hmm. that, you know, he and Jonna as a team can impress the doctor, their uh previous professor that has always given them both poor grades mm -hmm. so he is going to uh you know spend a determination uh mm -hmm. for something to prove yeah definitely would apply and daring engineering daring engineering difficulty of four you already have two free successes and um you are at four momentum right now by my count yes uh I've got to ask, uh, power systems? Ironically enough, yes. Okay. All right. Do you want to spend that, two momentum? Yeah, and I'll spend two momentum for a third die. All right. All right, that's already five successes. Can Jana get you... That is six. You get your two momentum back. And yeah, what is the message you wish to send to the Prometheus class? So the opening message is basically, is anybody, is anybody over there? And can you, for the love of God, get out of the, uh, get out of the binding uh, stream to the black hole? And uh, the voice that comes over, it's going to sound like Jenkins, but it's, it's a female Russian voice. And uh, the voice says, Da, I am working to try and free the best that from particle stream, but problem is half the bridge is not responding, and for whatever reason, ship is locked in place. Sorry, who is this? We were not aware of any federation in the area. Yeah, um, uh, Lieutenant uh, Jar Terrell, um, uh, of the starship planet um <laughs> I, I, can you give us remote control maybe i would but problem is is i'm using all computers computational power to not fall into black hole uh however 
Um, do you have a ship? I, I, I know you make joke about Flying Planet, but do you have ship? Yes, a small one. Does it have tractor beam? Uh, he looks at Jana. <laughs> Did you put a tractor beam on it? Uh, probably a small one. I'm going to spend two threat to make it so that you didn't install a tractor beam. You installed grappler cables. Look, I was going for this sort of retro 2170s charm sort of thing. Grappling with cables. Didn't I you? told you that was a bad idea. Well, blame blame Jaro. He's the one who is always into like those classic Earth vehicles that cause cancer and destroy their ozone layer right, that they love right. for some reason. Um, I mean, that's, who am I uh, talking to? Oh, this is Lieutenant Tamarochka of the Bastet. All right, L Lieutenant. Um, I'm going to try to push you out of the stream. Very good. Um, you might want to do uh, that very quickly, though. All right. It, it, my, I, your shield's I, good? Are your well, shields good? My, my shields are about to be uh, taken down because I see uh, two green raiders approaching me. Okay. Uh, Jana, can we redirect uh, power down the stream to create a surge to basically flush them out? Well, I mean, I don't know much about this Takan technology, assuming that's what it is, but I can do my best. It's it's all we got, man. <laughs> Maybe not. Uh, Lieutenant Jana, can you tell me the resonant frequency of the particle stream? Uh, I should be able to transfer that information to you, yes. Um, if why do the, you ask? Well, if the, if the Bastet can modulate its shields to a resonance frequency on the opposite side of the spectrum, it uh, may provide the same effect as two north poles on a magnet. Doctor, y you've, you've earned a cookie. <laughs> we didn't bring any cookies. I'll get you one when we get back. I'm going to hold you to that. I love cookies. Can you give that information to... I'm sorry, I already forgot your name over there. It's Ms. okay. Bastet. Many people forget about Tamarochka. They wait until ah. Tamarochka is in a Jeffrey's tube, and then they separate the ship, and nobody tells Tamarochka why they're separating ships. So, okay. you know, Tamarochka is used to this sort of thing by now. Uh all right, our, our, you sound our like doctor. you have real anger issues. Oh, I is have many even... anger issues. This you're is me gonna, calm. This is me I mean, in good mood. That is also your own Jenkins. fault. It's, it's, it's your own fault for being stationed on a ship that's stupid and splits apart. I'm sorry, are you insulting my ship? Because I will literally split the ship right now and fly over to kick your ass. Come and get me. <laughs> I'm going to spend two threat to make a complication the that <laughs> all of you literally see that the Bastet is now splitting into three parts. Less mass, I suppose that will actually be easier to push them out of the particle stream. That's a I... very clever uh, engineering technique. Uh, Tamaroshka, was it? Yes. And yes, that was my thinking, that after you push me out the particle stream, I now have three ships I can shoot you with. To borrow a Nausicaan you... phrase, I don't think you have the Gurumba. Could you please ignore our doctor? He's a Tellarite. So, I mean, that's just how they are. At this... Oh, it just sounded like an asshole on this end, so... No. Well, I wasn't going to say that. He is that, that but... too. Um, can you modulate your shields to the following frequency? Da, I that... can certainly try. She says it like it's a bad thing. Yeah, you send over the frequency. And what I'm going to say here is that this is going to require a roll. Because if you mess this up, you're going to basically shock the Bastet to hell and back. So, uh, this is going to be an insight in engineering. Again, you can only have one source of an assist. Uh, you know what? I think I'm just going to spend my threat here. To, uh, instead of using it in Starship Combat, I'm going to spend it to uh, make the difficulty of five here. This is your thing, Doctor. Uh, okay, what, what, what am I rolling? <laughs> You're rolling insight, an insight and engineering. engineering difficulty oh, of five. God, that's, that's a horrible. Um, all right. I would like to uh buy a valve. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> could he receive assistance from one of us at least? At least one of you. Yes. Yeah. And uh if I could get an F in chat, please. 
because. Um, all right. I am going to tap a value. Um, okay. And it's going to be my I'm a doctor, not a dot, dot, dot. That's uh, I'm a doctor, not an engineer. Or if you like, if it fits better, I'm a doctor, not an asshole. Mm-hmm. And uh, to, to get my considered as having an extra die with my two successes. So let's, oh boy. Okay. I'm and sorry, spent, you said that you, you said that was insight and engineering? Insight engineering, difficulty of five. And spend two of the momentum for- so uh, For an extra die. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would go even further than that probably. Um, <laughs> yeah. You would have to give me all your momentum and one threat to roll four dice here. That's, let's do that. Are you assisting Jana or am I? Uh, I re- I volunteered, so. Okay. All right. So Jana gave me a success already. Uh, uh, I haven't rolled yet. Yeah, it has. He oh, I thought you. Yet. Oh, I thought. I'm sorry. That was that was the daring <laughs> task from before. Asked. Sorry. Oh, my bad. My bad. Okay. Okay. Hey, that's oh, good. that's two successes Jana. from Jana. Three Which, and uh, but it was five. Yeah. Yeah. What well, that is that is success. <laughs> so what happens uh, is oh. you. We sort of let me see if I can do this with dynamic lighting off for without maybe bungling it up. But uh, if we were to go back to this map and let me, I don't know if there's a good way to do this, but I'm gonna see if I can. I'll just copy paste these so you can see where the Bastet is. All right, so the Bastet is over here uh, in three parts. Uh, it is split up into multi-vector assault mode. And what we see, and let me adjust it so the stream can actually see it. Uh, what we see and is the Bastet. There's this energy pulse that comes from the planet at superluminal speeds, and it slams into the th- three parts of the Bastet. And thanks to the correct shield modulation, the three parts of the Bastet go spinning off into separate places. So maybe one goes to where I have that temporary Banshee mark. Maybe one goes more towards the asteroids. But yes, you are able to free up the Bastet and restore the particle stream. And what I'm going to say, though, is as this happens, uh, the Bastet sections are immediately going to cloak. And all I would say on that is, last time you checked, Prometheus classes don't have cloaks. Did they... Did that ship... Uh, what... Look, who cares? Uh, it, this is we, just very confusing. Just... Yeah, we we got to get this planet back in alignment. And uh, Jana and Terrell, as you guys look at the con and the power readout, uh, what you're seeing is that the thing will stabilize, like the, the black hole pod racer system will stabilize eventually. But you're looking at the order of a few hundred thousand years, not instantaneously. Well, we tried. Uh, do we do we want to take what we can? I mean, we did all that work, and we can't even save the planet. No, it's saved. Okay. Well. But we got to get out of here now. Uh, why? As you look, say I mean, why, you look at the readouts, there's two brain craft in orbit of the planet trying to find you right now. Uh, well, we should be fine. I mean, the shuttle is powered down, and we're in this bizarre, fantastical control room after a black void, after a white void thing. So mm-hmm. it, we've got plenty of time to study all of this. I mean, just think about what we could do here. We can't just leave it for the Breen. Corral's scanning the all of the... All of the different panels weapon systems weapon systems we gotta have weapon systems and you're not seeing any weapon systems but as you frantically search we go back to the bridge of the umbriel where uh captain uh you are technically it is your turn in starship combat what are you gonna do so the breen are obviously aggressive now despite the borders have they fired on us yet that was yeah they fired at you once already because that's where the shields right we got jacked up yeah oof (laughs) Um, all right, well, we're going to have to fire back. Okay. 
Yeah. So firing back is going to be a control security on your part. The Umbriel will assist you with a weapon security. And uh, difficulty on this is a two. Uh, Watney, can you grab the Umbriel weapon security? All right, control security. I also think Watney might be muted. I am and, muted. Uh, weapon nice. security? Yeah. Yep. I'm going to go with energy weapons. As energy weapons would be a good focus. And the ship always has a focus, right? Always has a focus, yes. All right, that's one assist from the Umbriel. Means to be a one. I am going to use my determination. Okay. Um, tapping a value, right? Yep. Okay, it's going to be, how dare you? Okay. I think that could definitely apply here. I am Kiswick. Uh, all right, so. Well, it's a good thing you did because otherwise <laughs> you were going to fail. Uh, yeah, you get one momentum back and you may roll the damage for the Umbriel's phasers, which if memory serves, I believe it's a seven challenge die. Got it. All right. So you do have two momentum floating that only applies to this attack, but uh, as it stands, you are only doing two damage uh, after accounting for the resistance of the craft. Wonderful. Uh, rolling for veteran. Oh yeah, make sure to roll for that. Okay, no, it doesn't come back. Cool. Um, now for the damage, as a reminder... Um, you have a few options. You can either spend one momentum to get rid of two resistance, and you can do that as much as you want. I have no or, momentum, sir. Uh, you have two at the moment. Oh. Yeah, because yeah. phasers have versatile too, so you have two on every phaser attack. Okay. Um, so you could use that for just getting rid of the resistance, or uh, you could spend one to reroll those three zeros, and then one to get rid of two resistance if you really want to shoot for the shoot for the fences. Uh, I will do that. Okay. So three more dice, and all right. So that uh, what what's going to happen then is as you fire out and you hit the two green uh, starships that are closing in on the Bastet, uh, I would like you to roll me two system hits, please. Should be a macro called system hit for you. All right, that's one, two. So. Uh, Kijwick, you fire out. We see one of the phaser strips light up and lance out at the Breen craft. And uh, Athena reports, uh, excellent excellent shooting, Captain. You've disabled one's computers and the other's engines. Um, I would recommend getting the hell out of here or going to go get our crewmates. <laughs> You're going to be a captain faster than I got to be a captain, Athena, with that attitude. Johnson, take us to our people. Uh, yes, sir. And because I find it funny... The moment you say that, uh, Kijwick, Athena activates the ECH module, and she gets a red uniform. The pips flash in like, doosh, 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 doosh. And she just kind of looks at you and goes, that wasn't hard. We're going to have to talk about this later. <laughs> and at this point, we're going to cut actually quickly back down to the lab before uh, I show you guys what's coming next. But yeah, at this point, uh, Stetko, what are you, uh, what are you doing with the Breen? Uh, so hopefully, one of her other security officers who isn't horrifically burned would have uh, joined her as ordered to basically, like, cuff him. Yeah, I mean, at this point, uh, somebody has arrived, but it's not uh, a security she needs officer. Take a helmet off. It's not a security officer, though. Before you go too far. What? It's Mr. Cord. Oh my gosh, it's Cord. What are you doing here? Oh, <laughs> A most impressive victory. Two Breen and only one officer horribly burned. A testament yeah. to the ship and the crew. I wasn't here for that second part, but yeah. So then she like pats the rifle. She's like, we're going to put these guys in the brig. I will help you as I may. In the hopes that one day 
you will look at me with such affection as you look upon that Type 3 phaser rifle. Here's Victor Stedko. This is Stedko. I uh, temporarily disabled the two brain ships. We're on our way to pick up our people, but uh, I could use a hand up here. All right. Um, so she's actually thinking maybe like we should send them back. Can we do that, GM? Could we do that? Yeah. How are you going to send them back there? Are you going to transport team. them over? Are you going to stuff them in a probe and yeah. shoot them out that way? Are you going to like how, she how really wants to like take one of their helmets off and see what's underneath first. Well, you might kill them. Just saying. That... Yeah, but then like we could all finally know. <laughs> You heard it here first. <laughs> ELH canonizes the brain. Actually, if out of character, what I would say is that I think part of uh, Star Trek Online lore is that the reason they wear the helmets is something like um, it's 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 a military thing where the Breen are not actually one species. They're like multiple species. They're the Mandalorians. So, sort of, yeah, where they all just sort of wear the same armor. That way you can't go, oh, he's a human commanding me. I don't want to listen to him. Or, oh, that's a Vulcan. All they see is, oh, that's a Breen. I should listen to them kind of a thing. Mm, interesting. It's a means of eliminating any distinctions between them that might foment any kind of resentment or uh, racial animus. Exactly. Okay, interesting. Um, so why don't we actually try and interrogate them a little bit? Okay. Excellent. I'll, I'll get my duck tog. Yeah, she's going to like nod at him like, yeah, you hear that? He's going to get that thing. They're still still that. on the floor. Are they out cold? Yeah, they're <laughs> there. Oh, never mind. So... Yeah, she'll erect a force field around them. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, I don't know, like wake them up somehow. You, there's a way you could do it. Yeah, you wake them up. And okay. as they come to, they they sort of get their bearings, they get to their feet, and then they just stare at you with their helmets. And it's kind of creepy because they don't blink, they don't move, they just sort of stare. Yeah, so she like gets kind of close to the force field and like kneels down, just like... So uh, what did you think you were coming over here for? And because I find it funny, the, you don't you get a reply, but it's in that sort of brain like a Hegerhurger, like where it's just like a modulator going crazy. Doesn't really translate, though. So it, it can't translate. Mm hmm. OK. Um. <laughs> At, at this point, Kiswick, it's been about five minutes. Stetko still isn't on the bridge. Orders must be more difficult than noted. Uh, Johnson, ETA to our people. Yeah, about that, sir. Um, do you want me to thro fly through the debris field or? And I'll, I'll put you guys back on this map so you can see what you're working with here. But basically, the Umbriel is down here to the south. And uh, what you should be able to see is that there is, at least in front of you, blocking the Nebula route, uh, there is a Chelgreet, or sort of that pitchfork-like green ship uh, in front of you, blocking the corridor. That if you want to go through the debris field, um, it is something you could attempt all the same. Take us through the debris field. I don't want those green ships following us. Um, yes, sir. And uh, I think I'm going to have... I'm trying to think. Uh, well, decide amongst yourself. Somebody needs to roll for Johnson here. Because I, I believe I gave Johnson actual stats. No, I didn't give Johnson actual stats. Good job, past me. But um, what, I know what his stats are off the top of my head, though. So I know he has a daring of that and a con of that. So someone needs to roll Johnson's daring and con. I got um, it. And then the Umbriel will assist you with an engines. Actually, let's do structure and con at this point. And the difficulty, the difficulty on this has. will be... Let's make it a four. I'm assuming Johnson has the appropriate focus. He does, yes. Okay. And Watney, are you going to roll for the ship? Yeah, what am I rolling again? 
You're rolling a structure and a con. All right, that is three successes. Unfortunately, the difficulty is four. So I think what happens is you only get about halfway into the debris field until what happens is, well, for lack of a better term, and I see I need to fix the overlay, um, you end up taking some damage to your shields as literal asteroids and debris bounce off uh, your shield array. So the Umbriel is going to suffer four damage, which is eaten up by your resistance. Uh, so yeah, actually, you just sort of bounce off your shields, and you're fine for the moment, but you're only halfway through. Take it easy there, Mr. Johnson. We don't want the ship to fall apart before we get there. Um, yes, sir. And then we're going to go back to the Void. Because at this point, uh, I'm curious what the away team would want to do. There's no way we can let this this beautiful thing fall in the hands of the Breen. It, it's a marvel of ancient engineering technology. We would we could study this for centuries, and still not uncover all of its secrets. I'm sure you'd agree, Doctor, given the f flora and fauna above us. It is. The engineering here is as far beyond us as if we took the Banshee back to Neanderthal Terrans on Earth. Showed them. I mean, it would take... It's just orders of magnitude. It boggles the mind. But, I mean, Jaros just trying to figure out a way to... Figure out a way to steer it. And what I would is, say... Is, is it mobile? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It, it's mobile on a cosmic sense, Terrell. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> uh, is there any sort of advanced propulsion? Something we could pot potentially like set it to go to warp as we run away? I would say, unfortunately, no. Um, the best you could do is in a few hundred thousand years, it might be able to go past a system, but you're definitely not looking at like warp travel. You're looking at, um, what's essentially impulse speeds to get anywhere. And there's nothing, I mean, based on what we know of this facility, it is to con in nature, right? Well, you think it's to con that's been your running assumption anyway. Okay. Uh, well, we know how they communicate. Um, looking at the symbology and the the nature of the controls and the like, um, can we actually correlate it with any of the ancient civilizations that we're familiar with, like the Takan and their crystal structures, or the uh, the Iconians? I'd like you to roll me an insight engineering difficulty of one. Sorry. Say sorry yet. All right. Hey, one success. Yeah. You know what? This isn't a con. I mean, obviously it looks like a con, but there's these subtle differences in the way the glyphs are being displayed. You're about 90% sure that you're dealing with Iconian technology here, not a con. Hmm. Based on the orientation of these displays, and what little I remember from my ancient civilizations class, which was really, really boring, but um, I guess it's coming in handy after all. Um, I think we're dealing with Iconian technology here. That could be beneficial to us. The Iconians were capable of using their gateways to transport things through space. If they have a gateway on this planet, we could either use it to, well, leave, or... I mean, the Takan had their stellar transporters, but maybe the Iconians had something else like that? Maybe? I don't know. I mean, if we can't have this, I would like for us to send it away. Well... So the Breen can't have it. I mean, I think, and I'm not an engineer, but I think that just as the Umbriel cannot beam itself away this installation may not be able to transport itself through a, a stellar transporter. 
but maybe maybe there's something we could do to dissuade the brain I mean, if you really look at it uh, engineering and medicine are parallel and if we look at this closed system like a body and the brain as uh, an invading microorganism we may be able to activate an immune response to drive it out you you lost me about six stages of that metaphor ago doctor so turn sparky there into an antibody essentially yes um <laughs> and, and, and charo puffs up c double minus <laughs> D double plus. <laughs> I may have to rethink your grade, Mr. Terrell. You're operating on the assumption that there are more entities like this that could actually be used against the Breen. This planet, to use your metaphor, may not actually have an immune system of any sort. Perhaps not. But if we can't create an antibody, we may be able to simulate a fever. It's right about then. Kijwick, I think it's fair to say you've been trying to reach the away team this entire time, yes? Yep, comms are, comms are on. Then you finally are able to get through to the Banshee, who then relays to the rest of the away team. Kijwick to Banshee, come in. Uh, away team here, Captain. We Doctor, we've been trying to get a hold of you for a couple of minutes. We uh, pissed off a couple of Breen ships back there. We want to know if it's safe to get you guys back on board so we can skedaddle. Oh, we can't leave. Hmm, that's going to make things a bit more difficult. Uh, what are you doing? Oh, there's a Prometheus class uh, floating around here, too, by the way. Yeah, it's, it's the, uh, cloaked. I don't know of any Prometheus class vessels in this vicinity. It's, it's it called the Bastet. The Bastet, yes. Okay. Some um, um, Lieutenant Chernobyl or some such is aboard. Sure. Do they do they need an assist? Oh, we I already got... did that. Yes. So what's holding you up? Well, for one, we still have the changeling and need to find some way to get it home. And uh, for another, this is a priceless engineering and archaeological find that cannot be left in the hands of the brain i understand tacon findings are important but we no 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 captain sure that... not tacon iconian excuse you I iconian are it's iconian yes what it seems to be the uh the inverting of what would typically be the uh, 871st letter of the Takan alphabet is uh, a dead giveaway and uh, that was all Mr. John actually a very keen eye great work tell me in one sentence what do you guys need to do to get back on the ship because uh, I'm not sure we can get out of this debris field and take on two brain ships at the same time the question is do you want us to leave this behind captain we can get back to the ship, but leaving this means leaving it for the Breen. Whatever you guys can do safely. But if it comes down to between my crew and an archaeological find, I'm going to beam you guys up. Uh, Captain, you know me, Captain. Safety is my middle name. Uh, I must... <sighs> I have to disagree with you, Captain. Um, we know the risks. Yeah, I understand, but if they destroy us and they kill you, they still claim the find. You really want to give them that pride with your dead body on there? Doc? Sir, uh, if, if I may interject for just a moment, you do remember what the Iconians were capable of. If there's a gateway on this planet or some other advanced form of technology, it could grant the Breen an unprecedented tactical advantage, the same kind that Captain Sisko had to prevent the Dominion from securing. And Picard with the Romulans. I understand the difficulty there, but 
My priority is to get the changeling back to its original time. We can talk about Iconian gateways secondary. I understand the urgency. The Iconian gateway may allow us to get the changeling back to its home and allow us a safe method of egress. I'm going to spend two threat at this point. Uh, The Umbriol is actually going to come... uh, Well, not under attack, but the uh, Breen ships are going to start approaching you. And as I switch maps here, I think what we're going to do is we are at uh, about that hour, hour 15 minute mark. So we are going to go to our break here as the Chelgreets close in. But yeah, uh, we'll be back in about uh, five to ten minutes. Stick around.
All right, welcome back. Um, we are about to get into some Starship combat, but I believe, uh, Dag, you have questions that I might be able to answer. Well, considering the Umbriel is in the middle of a debris field, mm -hmm. uh, asteroid field, uh, it makes sense that we could be able to use these asteroids for cover and uh, perhaps use Umbriel's e-warfare system. That is something you could do, yes. I mean, I would say because you are in the debris field, you have two challenge dice worth of cover right now. Um, yeah, I want to maintain communication with my away team as long as possible. So I've got uh, somebody. I'm probably on tactical still until Stetco arrives. Mm -hmm. um, so I will, yeah. I will initiate the e-warfare system to disrupt coordination between the three ships. All right. So uh, what that's going to involve is I need you to roll. Well, first off, we need to decide what the difficulty of this task is. Um, specifically, this is going to be a control engineering. The Bastet will assist with a communications and security. And you need to pick a difficulty, either one, two or three. And if you succeed, you successfully jam them. But what I would say is that because of your e-warfare suites, whatever difficulty you select, it's one less than that. 
So if you select difficulty three, it's two. If you pick two, it's one. If you pick one, it's zero. The caveat to that is whatever difficulty you pick is what the Breen have to beat in order to, you know, overcome the jamming. Right. Um, ah, let's go for max difficulty. Okay, so this will be a difficulty two overall. Right, and what am I rolling and what is the ship rolling? Control engineering for you. Umbriel is communications and security. Could we <laughs> say that Stecco like beamed them to the brig? Yeah, I mean, if you want to come running back, back on like... the bridge at this point, yeah, I'd, I'd let it happen. Yeah, I don't want to be like just denying orders at this point, but to take care of business mm -hmm. and get back to the bridge. Um,. Yeah, however you want to do that. So I also have uh, Starship security systems. Would apply. Okay. And how much threat do I have to give you for a third dice? Just one. How much threat do I have to give you for a fourth dice? Uh, you have to give me three total. I will give you three threat. All right. And I will roll 4d20. Uh, and uh, Watney, you got the ship? Um. Yeah, what am I rolling for it? Comms engine, uh, com security. Okay. All right. Well, that's God. uh, it's one success. We need. Okay, so the Umbriel does get you the three, which means you get a momentum back. And yeah, uh, the Umbriel is able to jam the Breen from communicating with one another, which means that they are going to act not as co cohesively as usual. Uh, what I would say, though, is that does use up your tactical action for the Umbriel. All right. Isrik to away team. We've got them jammed, but I'm not sure for how long. If you can figure out what to do with the Changeling at the same time as what to do with these Iconian relics, that's great. But otherwise, we're going to come and get you in about 120 seconds. Uh, cap, 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 you break it. All right, nice. I might have paused a little bit of time. I don't know. <laughs> um, Mr. Terrell, the comm line is still open. Lieutenant. We're, we're, we're doing what we can. Right. I understand that. Here's we um, go. And, uh, Charo looks at, uh, the doctor and uh, Jana just says, all right, see you on the other side. And he beams to the Banshee. All right, so that's going to be the Banshee's turn, which means it is now the Breen's turn. And the Breen don't know about the Banshee, so they're just going to advance on the Umbriel. And I'm going to spend two threat that they're going to attack back to back. So let's deal with the first attack. Great. Uh, the first attack will hit you. And that is uh, quite a big chunk of damage. Uh, yeah, I'm not even going to add that up. Your shields are gone. Great. And uh, they are going to inflict two breaches on you. So another to structure and another to engineering. Uh, hopefully you guys are noting that on the Umbriel sheet. You do. Yeah, because at this point you should have two to structure and one to en engines by my count. Okay, done. Um, but that structure is going to matter here, so... Nope, didn't mean to roll structure again. Hold on. I want this dice. Alright, nobody's injured, so that's fine. Uh, but you getting hit in the engines is going to reduce your power by two, so you're down to eight. And that's just the first attack. The second attack, I think, is going to be, um, still the cannons here. Um will hit you, but there is a complication on the field. And it does look like another two breaches for you. So another to engines and one to sensors. Ouch. And that takes your power down to, I believe, six. And at this point, uh, the complication is going to be that that uh, Chell Greet that attacked you is actually going to momentarily lose uh, target lock on you. 
Um, and I know I said you guys had cover earlier, but even with you guys rolling max damage or, or max challenge die for your cover, they still do enough damage that the cover doesn't help you, unfortunately. Like, the disruptor pulses coming from the Breen ships literally just bifurcate and otherwise vaporize the rocks that you could have used for cover. Mm. But uh, the good news is that is their tactical action for this round, which means we come back around to the players. Uh, what do you want to do at this point? So Stecka will enter the bridge like at some point when this is happening and just say like, sorry, I'm late. I was arraigning our prisoners. All good. I need sensors back online. We can do that as a minor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So that's your minor action. What are you doing for your actual action? Right. Uh, which do we get to know which one? Well, we uh, yeah, which the uh, B is the us. one that lost target lock. B it also happens to be the closest one to us. Mm -hmm. Well, they should be equidistant. Yeah, they're both three away from you. All right. What's, uh, huh. We got sensors back. If we mm -hmm. take a sensor action, that's our action, huh? Yep. Dang it. I'm trying to like be like, can we figure out what these things are made of so we can polarize our hull to push them all away like fragments and just have the brain have to deal with them? I don't know. You tell me. Ugh. If you're stuck, what I could say is the Banshee could use its turn. Yeah, let's have the Banshee sneak up from behind. All right, so Tara, right. what is what is the Banshee doing? Uh, the Banshee is, uh, it's sadly, it's not going to be cloaked um, because I can't waste the power. Uh, and it's just going to fly up from the planet uh, going up to B mm -hmm. and basically getting as close as possible and blasting away with the rotating micro turret. All right. So what I would say is that getting from point A to point B is an actual task, and that's going to be your engine task. If you want to actually fire the phasers of the Banshee, you would have to give me two momentum to retain the initiative to do so. I would also say that if you do that, it does mean that the Umbriel is essentially skipped this round. So the, the Chell Greets would get to go, and then it would be the Umbriel's turn again. Uh, that's did up pass to you. The buck to you. Um, All right. I, I think I think we've agreed that the only thing we're gonna do is we're probably gonna fire torpedoes on B. Okay. If, if we do it. Um. All right. Well, you you guys take the shot. Okay. Studco, target the cruiser that's lost the target lock. Torpedoes fire. Hey, sir. Now, just so you know, torpedoes, firing torpedoes gives me one threat automatically. Yep. Torpedoes are classically long range only. You're currently at close range, which means your difficulty is a five to hit with torpedoes. Phasers, however, are difficulty of two. Retcon. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, we would know that. Stedco would know that. Yeah. Sir, recommend phasers at this range. Your discretion. Aye, sir. All right. What am I doing? You're doing a control security, and the Umbriel will assist you with a weapon security. I've got the weapon security. What's the difficulty? Two. Two? Yeah. How, how much momentum do we have? You have one. Hey. Anybody's thoughts? Any A penny for your thoughts, team. Anytime you do anything, I think you should always at least spend one momentum. <laughs> oh, yes. A resounding singular do it. Um, mm, do it. Okay. I have uh, Starship's uh, weapon systems. No, that, that doesn't apply. apply to phasers. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that would apply. I'm really, telling you... chat, I have a focus other than forensic science. 
I I mean, Are really, sure I think for, I think forensic science is the one that would apply here. Yeah. To know oh. where to apply the most lethal damage. That's, I rolled. Okay, there you there go. There it goes. Yeah, that's four successes, oh which means you get two Great. momentum. Uh, and yeah, uh, you're rolling the Umbriel's damage, which is uh, seven challenge dice. All right, so kind of that same thing I told Dag earlier. Uh, after accounting for the enemy's resistance, you are only doing two damage. But again, because you're using phasers, you have two floating momentum. And we can use those to either cancel its resistance, cancel two resistance, and reroll two zeros. Correct. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, let's do that. Two challenge dice. Mm hmm. All right, so that is nine damage, and canceling out the two resistance means that uh, I now need you to roll me two system hits because your phaser does have the area quality. How do I do that? There should be a macro called system hit. Nope. I can grab I it. Just do the command. Nope, there we go. Oh. Uh, so yes, what I would say mm -hmm. is that uh, luckily for you, as you fire out with your phasers, uh, what's going to happen is uh, the one that lost target lock B uh, is actually going to take a significant blow to the left prong of the pitchfork. Uh, hull breach opens up a cascading chain of explosions. Um, the other one, Chelgreet A, is, you're going to knock its weapons offline temporarily. Helpful. Uh, y yes. Damn it, uh, weapon down for the moment. Good hitting. So that is the Umbriel's turn. And we now go to the Chell Greet, whose weapons are uh, disabled. So they're going to spend their minor to bring the weapons back up. And then I think what they're going to do is they're going to attempt to scan for weakness on the Umbriel. <laughs> uh, we have no weaknesses. It's cool. Well, you do see that they're locking, uh, for whatever reason, they're locking onto the mission pod or the pod of the Luna class. And that is going to be the Chelgreet A's turn, which now goes back to the Banshee. So what is the Banshee doing at this point? All right, they're going after the Chelgreet A. Okay. Um, just going to fly up to it and um, release the micro turret. Okay. So, uh, the Umbriel is going to need to spend me one power just to get up in time to hit the Chell Greet. You're also going to have to give me one power for firing weapons. But yeah, you're doing a control security from Terrell, assisted by the Banshee's weapon security. Difficulty of two. The Umbriel or the Banshee? The Banshee, sorry. And the Umbriel should be at five power, right, for firing phasers? Correct, yes. All right, and I will spend a momentum. And somebody roll for the Banshee. Not it. Got it. <laughs> What's the roll? Uh, weapon security for the Banshee. Focus, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, that's already uh, four successes. Does the Banshee get you any more? It does not, but you still get two momentum for your troubles. And yeah, uh, I believe the turret's damage is something like six or seven. Six. And I have the versatile two, so two um, momentum, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Which I'll re-roll all of those zeros. Mm -hmm. And I'll also uh, take off... Uh, the two levels of armor. Okay. All right, and that is enough that you inflict your own breach. Go ahead and roll me a system hit. And yeah, you uh, you definitely make sure that the weapons of this Chell Greek class are completely offline at this point. And uh, Terrell's trying to basically stay in uh, as close as he can to the Chell Greek. Mm hmm. Gotcha. All right. Well, uh, at this point, it's going to be the Chell Greet A's turn, and it's going to spend its entire action re uh, getting its weapons back online. So that's its entire action. 
which now means a new round. Uh, I believe it is now time for either the Umbreal or the Banshee. Do we have uh, any dialogue off screen about um, detecting the Banshee or anything like that? Uh, yes, you would see the Banshee is uh, swooping up behind Chilgreet A and opening fire. But in the grand scheme of things, uh, the Chelgreet still has its shields, unfortunately. Well, I think the Banshee can keep the Chelgreet, Chelgreet A uh, occupied. What's the status on Chelgreet E? On E? Well, now that you mention E, it was originally attempting to ignore you, but at this point, it's starting to head in your direction. All right, well... Let's see what we can do with uh, Chelgreet B. Okay. And uh, I know we may have lost somebody, but uh, Kiswick would uh, order Stetko to fire phasers once again. Okay. So just so you know, firing phasers at this point would be at a big, uh, it would be at a detriment for you all. Uh, it would be a total difficulty of three after accounting for the fact that you've already fired. Actually, no, it would be difficulty of four because you've already used your tactical action you already have used the tactical station. So yeah, you're looking at a difficulty uh, four here. Would right. that decrease if he used the direct task? No, it would only allow him to assist with presence command. Right. Basically, it's the system's way of preventing you from just spamming weapons. That makes sense. Um... Could we use the tractor beams to launch some of these asteroids at the Chelgreed B? I would say it's a good idea, but unfortunately, tractor beams are a tactical action. Tactical. Fracking A. <laughs> if I may. Now we see evasive maneuvers. <laughs> Freaking diplomacy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Matthew? I was just going to say, I don't think you can win this fight. Beam us up and force us to leave i i have an idea um i was just wondering uh, jim would would those of us on the planet have actions during this round to to try to assist because i do have an idea maybe a little harebrained but it may just do the trick i mean yeah you you're still actors during this time what is it you're trying to do though um uh okay so this let me lay out my whole line of thinking and you can you can yay or nay this Okay. Um, I'd like to first spend two momentum to create an advantage. Mm -hmm. uh, that advantage would be that this this facility is equipped with Iconian probes. Okay. Uh, similar to those encountered by the Yamato and the Enterprise. Mm -hmm. uh, and we could then give the um, the computer a directive to scan the brain ships and basically reformat their computer cores into Iconian data cores. Hopefully, crippling and maybe destroying the icon, the the brain ships in the process. So you would have to spend two momentum to create that advantage, which would leave right. you with one. Right. But before you spend it, what I'm going to tell you is that mm -hmm. would definitely be a difficulty of six. It would be one of those rare instances where I think I have to go above difficulty five to make this a difficulty six. And if it matters, you would be doing a daring engineering, or maybe Jana would be doing it. I you could mean, assist each other at the very least. I mean, I think, uh, you know, that's a value challenging moment right there, baby. This is this is this this here's one of them moments. And and this is all happening on comms while Kiswick is like options people. Yeah. Just we could we could do it. We could do a we could do a momentum slash threat dump to get you all the dice you could possibly roll. Oh, I'm I'm fine going with your plan. It's up to you guys. Hmm. I Either would way, like to see I this mean, happen. I, I think I, I just think it'd be fun to see it. Yeah, I'm I'm here for the crazy. Okay, uh, I'll spend two momentum then to Make create advantage. that advantage that the planet is equipped with Iconian probes. Mm -hmm. I'd like to challenge. Uh, no, actually. I'd like to create a complication and put myself into mortal danger. That Jana, because I have the value, dangerously obsessed with new technology, 
mm -hmm. is going to refuse to leave regardless of what orders he receives or what the doctor tries to do. So even if this is uh, like a mortal or imperiling situation, he's mm -hmm. actively going to fight people and it will even try to block a transporter beam that tries to beam him up. Sure, yeah, Oof. I'll allow it. So with that complication, I would get uh, a point of determination, right? You would indeed, yep. And then I will spend that point of determination on... Let's find out. Do I have a reasonable value here? Yeah, I mean, I guess I'll go for there's no one I'd rather get into trouble with than Jaro's Harel because I'm actively trying to do something that will save his life. I believe that he is uh, possibly going to die in that mm -hmm. uh, battle that's going on. So I'll tap that for two free successes. Okay. Um, would I, I guess I don't have time to go through mental repository. No, no you definitely do not. <laughs> um, prehensile tail, right tool for the right job. Yeah, I don't think anything <laughs> you have is going to help you on this. No. Uh, improvisation or experimental technology? I'll give you improvisation. Okay. And I will give you, what would it be? One momentum and... What is it? Five threat to four roll threat. Th three dice. Yep. Or, or, sorry, or four yeah. dice. Four dice. It was rolling be, four dice. Would be four threat. Yeah. Hey, okay. welcome back, Wani. Then uh, so that was sorry. and it was a what? It was a daring engineering on your part. Did you hear um, that we're doing a diff six daring engineering stat go? All right. Oh hey. God, he did it! He did it. That is a grand <laughs> oh total gosh. of seven oh successes. So you get a momentum back. <laughs> So you are going to fire up the probes and we sort of see these balls of gray light <laughs> sort of leave the planet's surface and begin hounding the Chell Greet. However, I'm going to spend the threat you just gave me to create the complication that there are now orbs going for the Banshee and the Umbreal. Oh... Oh, I don't. Uh, I, just, I don't think we meant to do that. <laughs> no, Doctor. I mean, it was a brilliant plan, but you've also murdered everyone. Terrell, get out of there before that thing can scan you. And Johnson, get us out of here. Uh, yes, sir. But what are we gonna do about those on the planet? Uh, we're fine. We're actually the safest people in this general vicinity. We we can actually go to a rendezvous point and maybe hope that the Breen uh, limp away. All right, so just to be clear that I understand what you're doing, you are literally taking the Banshee and the Umbriel, leaving the area of engagement, and leaving Tur or leaving Janna and Dottig on the planet, correct? Hey, we've uh, never done this before. We might as well. Tur Turrell is actually going to bank right and fly back into the planet. Okay. Figuring that, um, you know, he's just going to take evasive actions He's going to try to do a, just a, a, a scoop. Just a hot drop. Yep. <laughs> he's, going to try, he's going to try to scoop up uh, scoop up uh, his, his buddy and uh, the other guy. Well, as Jana has said, he's oh, going to no. actively <laughs> resist, resist any beam up. So I think as the Umbriel angles away and begins to take off, the Banshee swoops down into the atmosphere of the planet, and Janna, you see that Terrell's trying to get a tractor lock, or a transport lock. Uh, I would like to try to use the power systems on this station and the uh, probes that we've seen with the Will of the Wisps to mm -hmm. try to create some kind of transport inhibitor field, not such that it would interfere with the Doctor's transport, but that it would with mine. Two and threads then, spent, done. And then I would like to try to hail the Banshee done listen jaro whatever happens this can't fall into the brain's hands go without me take the doctor rendezvous with the umbriel I, we can't leave this behind all right if Jar jaro's going to uh, <laughs> a attempt to beam them both but he's expecting to not be able to beam jana and if he can't he will leave it all right. I, I, as, as you're going to do that, I'm not going to say don't try to do that, uh, but Dottig will just bark, belay that order. Lieutenant Terrell, 
Leave the system. Yeah, he's not listening to either one of them. Nice. <laughs> All right, well, uh, Terrell, this is a very important role that could flavor where things go from here. This <laughs> is going to be a control and engineering. The ship will assist you, or the Banshee will assist you with sensors engineering. Let's break down the difficulty. Difficulty increase one. The target is not on a transporter pad. Difficulty of three. The target is currently within an inhibiting field. The difficulty spikes to difficulty five. Um, you have three power. I'm going to say with threat, you have one shot at this, meaning that you have just enough to attempt one beam out and enough power to warp away. But if you roll a complication, you're going to be stuck here with them. One mm. question. Mm -hmm. Would the difficulty be diff different for me and for the doctor? Because I actively said that I wanted to try to right like, around cast you around myself, but not yeah. him. I think it would be difficulty three for the doctor. Correct. Yes, it would be difficulty three for the doctor, but difficulty five if you want to get them both. And again, let me be clear here. You have one shot at this. If you fail, you are stuck here with them. If he gets three, does he get the doctor? You get the doctor, but not Terrell, or not Jana. Yes. Not Jana. Okay. All right. Let's see. What can we? Uh, what can we do here? Um, let's see. Uh, he is going to challenge a value. Mm -hmm. uh, of uh, let's see what's out there, because mm -hmm. he doesn't want his buddy to see what's out there. <laughs> Okay. So he's challenging that value to get the determination to spend. Mm -hmm. And then um, and then I'll just buy one extra die. Okay. And you said... Can control control engineering. Assist. Engineering? Control engineering. The Banshee assists you with sensors engineering. Okay. Can Kishwick assist? No, you're on the Umbriel, unfortunately. Right, but if I see what the Banshee's doing, you know, violating the order to meet at a rendezvous and determine that it's heading back to the planet, mm -hmm. I could hail um, Dadig and Janna and order them to hey, they're not gonna listen. <laughs> beam up to the Banshee using my command discipline, which triggers advisor to let John re-roll a d20. Yeah, let it happen. You're such a nice guy. <laughs> All right. And, Damn it, uh, Terrell. Hail the, hail the surface. Um, either power systems or shuttlecraft operations. I'll give you shuttlecraft. All right. We're going to ban power systems from all future games. <laughs> yeah, at this rate. <laughs> all right. And here we go. That's all right, five. That, that is five. <laughs> I do need to see the Banshee's sensor engineering, though. The banshee up somewhere right here. There's the banshee. I, I've got it. Okay. I mean, all it and has then... to do is not roll a twenty. That's all it has <laughs> to do. All right, it didn't roll a twenty. Good, you get a success. Is Kishu so, yeah. doing a presence command on the order at all? Yeah, uh, yeah, you're still doing a presence command. So okay. that would be very interesting if Kiswick rolled a complication. I'm just gonna throw that out there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're nothing if not crazy here. Uh, and I'll uh, have a specialization in leadership. Yep. Jana, Dodig, the Banshee's coming back for you. Get on it. Captain, we can't do that. You can't leave this to the Breen. And as you say that, Jana, you feel the telltale uh, feeling of transport as the blue light envelops you and Dodig. And moments later, uh, you arrive on the bridge of the Banshee. Um, without the changeling, I imagine. Yeah, changeling, you kind of left behind. <laughs> Terrell, where, where is the changeling? Where is the infant? Can you say four-parter? <laughs> and Jonah just slumps into the chair and is holding his head in his hands. And so close. Hit war. Terrell, did you get them? I got the Doctor Ed Jana. 
But and the changeling? Not the other thing. <laughs> Meet at the rendezvous. We're sending you coordinates. Maybe if the Breen leave, we can come back and pick up what we lost. All right. So I think at this point, it's safe to say that you guys get to the rendezvous. And if you guys want to have a meeting as a group, we can. But yeah, at this point, you have less the area of engagement, which means the scene is over. And yeah, uh, I thought I had a conference room, but apparently I do not for the Umbriel. I'll make a note of, to put one in. Uh, so let's just do this on the bridge for now. Let's just say that everybody comes to the bridge uh, one by one and will allow you to have the conversation there. So Dottig, you're here. Stetko's here. John is here. Also, did I miss anything while I was... Nah, nah you didn't miss anything. All right, so yeah, uh, everybody's on the bridge at their stations, and my question is, where do you go from here? You left the changeling on the planet. You know, I forgot about the changeling. You were on the Banshee. Who was responsible for it when you left? Commander? And he will turn his attention to Dr. Dodig who has three pips. Mm -hmm. Keswick doesn't refer to Dodig as commander often. Well, Captain, the changeling is still in its container. Last you checked? Yes, last I checked. It was never more than a meter away from me. I'm much more interested to talk about how you endangered not one, but two ships for the sake of two officers who, in the grand scheme of things, are expendable. You can read my log on my choices about what officers I deem expendable or not, but I'm not going to lose my CMO and my chief engineer because of an Iconian relic. Starfleet has a whole core of engineer that could figure that out. You should have thought about that. We were in the safest possible place. After the probes got done with those green ships, there, I doubt there'd be much left of them. Captain, may I have permission to speak freely? Always. What you and Jaro just did was an act of spectacular cowardice, and it's unbecoming of a Starfleet officer. You chose us over the Federation, over the entire ship. If you can't put one person's life at risk, if you can't sacrifice one person for the good of the ship, you don't even deserve to be a captain. Noted. Terrell, you want to explain why you went back for them instead of coming to the rendezvous? I, I, I can't. I, I just can't lose anybody else. I, you know, just not what I'm ready for at this point. Johnson, status on the brain ships. Well, um, the ones that got scanned by the probe have self-destructed at this point, but the rest of that brain fleet appear to be heading into that area. So, yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to get back there. And now, not only have we lost the facility, but we've lost the changeling, Captain. This mission has been a failure. And all of that for a stupid raffle. Yes, yes. For want of a horseshoe nail. Very apropos. I'll be in sick bay. Johnson sent a coded message to Starfleet Command. Let them know what's at stake. Hi, sir. Um, okay, that's odd. I don't need any more 
oddities today, Johnson. Speak up. You know, uh, Tamarochka, sir. Lieutenant Tamarochka. Yeah. I don't know what it means, but she sent a message encoded on the beta f- band, which normally you don't check until you do secure comms. Anyway, point is, sir, uh, she says, I've got it. That's it. It literally just says, I've got it. Where's the message coming from? The planet, sir. Computer, when did Tamarochka leave Umbriel? There is no such Tamarochka in the crew manifest for either Umbriel or Deep Space October. That was the person we spoke to on the Bastet, sir. It seems like your colleague has picked up the changeling. You were able to free them from their anchor? Yes, the doctor had a very brilliant idea. Right now, I'm thinking like Kiswick is just going to set a course for DSO and bite the bullet whenever an admiral comes to snap at him. Mm-hmm. All right. And if I may, I would like to have one scene with Jaro uh, in the turbo lift or something like that, if that's possible. Yeah, cool. you certainly may. Uh, mm-hmm. Just go to Theater of the Mind for this one. Apparently, my <laughs> I'm missing like three maps, which I could have sworn I put in here, but I can't find them for the life of me. So. Yeah, we just go to Theater of the Mind, wherein uh, we see Jana and Terrell in a turbo lift. When when Jaro was, you know, so like, as Jaro gets on the turbo lift, he sees Jana coming, and he's like, you know, doing that, pushing the elevator push door the closed. Buttons, yeah, but uh, obviously he gets in. You all right? Not really. Yeah, well, that makes, uh, I think, everyone on this ship. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, I've I've lost a, a lot of people, Jana. You remember that time when we graduated the, uh, from the Academy? It was right after the speech by, a, what, that retired admiral, I think his name was Picard. Um, we got drunk, took me out to that tattoo parlor that I still regret today, to this day. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, Jaro, I've realized something. You don't respect me. You've never respected what I want or my choices. You do things without really even thinking about me. And I just let you do that. That's fair. You said uh, you didn't want to lose anyone. Well, you just did. And he's going to stop the turbo lift at the next deck and Mm -hmm. walk away. Mm. Ooh. (laughs) And on that, I have to ask, does anybody have any further scenes they wish to have either on the Umbriel or DSO? Or is that where we stop today's session? where we stop i, I think that's it's where we stop I think that's where we stop <laughs> that's where we stop <laughs> all right cool wow ow my feelings oh <laughs> my god you guys so um i want to i want to commend um matthew as jana for that wonderful moment of just dressing down kiswick mm-hmm. um <laughs> Yeah, you need to be the captain in the next game. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think I'm going to be the engineer on Deep Space October any longer because I've lost my best friend. I've just alienated the captain. No, hey. no, no. Kiswick fully respected that. He just, in the moment, it was like, I'm, I'm going to deal with that. Okay. Yeah, Kiswick probably loved it because he's like, yeah. Andor. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I think in session one, Kiswick brought everybody into the ready room and said that he expects. Oh, he expected that. Yeah. Candid. Oh, Shizdo, you missed it. 
Jana um, gave the best dressing, like it rivaled even your ooh, dressing down. Yeah, no, like, that was great. It was literally the same thing of, I don't respect you. You've lost people, et cetera, et cetera. You don't deserve to be in command. And she's no, just go back and watch like the 10 minutes yeah. of the VOD. You'll, yeah. you'll see a great dressing down. Oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, um, I guess this is where I'll end it for YouTube. Uh, YouTube. Uh, see you later.